The market is flooded with cheap smartphones from China and I just came across a cheap Kubot Echo device that gets most of the basics right for a low price of $80 US. My name is Linus, stay tuned. The phone ships with all the usual stuff and some extras include a high quality TPU case. The Kubot Echo does not spark any exceptional looks but it is a very well made phone and it has a solid metal frame that goes all around the device. The buttons however are plasticky and they feel kind of cheap. A one thing you are going to notice is that the phone is very thick, measuring at 11 cm. That is not only due to a pretty large 3000 mAh removable battery but, but also due to the fact that the phone has a huge speaker built in. The speaker can get really loud and the sound quality is pretty good for a cheap phone. However, the sound may get distorted at the highest volume settings. Speaking of the display, the 5 inches 720p panel is pretty sharp and bright for a cheap phone but we have those enormous bezels on each side. It's great that we have a 5 megapixels front facing camera and the LED notification light but the capacitive buttons are not backlit. As for the main camera, there is a 13 megapixel shooter. The Kubot Echo runs on a little outdated MediaTek 6580 chip with a clock speed of 1.3 GHz. Also, the phone has 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of expandable storage. Honestly, the spec sheet does not really impress but some 3D games like Asphalt Ain run absolutely fine on the medium graphics. The phone ships with the Android 6.0 but we have a few added features by Kubot. Some of the extra features include a variety of gesture and motion controls. Some of them work well but others are very slow to respond. In general, the UI performance is good. I didn't have any lag or stutter on a daily basis and I think that's the most important thing for a cheap phone. You should never expect any miracles from the cameras of budget phones but the Kubot Echo can take some pretty nice looking daylight photos. Obviously, the quality decreases in lower lit situations as on most of the cheap phones. The selfies won't look as sharp as you may expect but it may be good enough for social media. As for video, uh, the quality of footage is kind of poor like on most of the cheap phones. When it comes to connectivity, the phone does everything quite well. The GPS lock speeds are fast but it could be more accurate when you use it with navigation apps. The 3000 mAh battery performs great. I could get about 1.5 days of usage out of this phone which is a very good result. The Kubot Echo is not going to be your next powerhouse device but it gets the basics right. We don't have any exceptional looks but the phone is very well made, it has a metal frame, it is compact to carry around and the stock Android is what the cheap phones need. You can also take some ok looking photos and the battery life is great thanks to a pretty huge capacity. However, the processor is a little outdated if you are a spec head, the capacitive buttons are not backlit and there are those huge black bezels that a lot of people hate. At the end of the day, the Kubot Echo may not be the only cheap device out there but it gets all the basics right and it is pretty fast phone on a daily basis. However, you have to consider if the previously mentioned shortcomings are important to you or not. It was Linus, thanks for watching and as always if you have any questions please drop me a comment down below. Also please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and please visit gizmochina.com for all the latest and greatest Chinese tech news and reviews. See you soon.